There are a few different directions you can go with grayscale comics. Number one would be black and white comics, so just pure black ink on a white paper or white canvas, which would include, you know, like doing cross hatching or stippling, but it would all just be black and white, no gray tones in between. Um, second would be screen tones which are primarily used in manga, though I've seen them in webcomics all over the place and in western comics as well. Um, and then finally number three would be grayscale, so using the full value spectrum from white to black. Honestly, they're all great choices. <laughs> it really just depends on what you want to do with your comic. So for example, with my comic The Magpie, which is a horror thriller comic, I chose to do purely black and white. That's a lie. There's a couple shades of gray in there for desired effect, but for the most part I limited it to just black ink on white canvas. Um, and I wanted to do that because I really wanted to play with um, shape and silhouette, and I really wanted to limit my palette, I guess. <laughs> I really wanted that like really stark contrast between the black and white, and it allowed me to play around quite a bit with like creepy atmosphere. So yeah, that's why I went with that. But there are pros and cons to all of these techniques, and yeah, it really just depends on what you want to do. I guess I'll start off with pure black and white. Well, one of the great things about black and white comics is that you can get some really cool stuff with contrast. <laughs> you can do some great stuff with contrast. You really get to play around with um, silhouettes. You can get some really atmospheric stuff. You can play around with really versatile textures as well. You do have to craft them all yourself. <laughs> um, unlike screen tones, which I'll get to in a little bit, which are a lot more textures right out of a box, but with black and white you can really control what textures are being made because you're creating them. And you also get to play around with limited tones, but that could also be a con, depending on what you want. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess that's a con. So it's very limited with tones. You just get black and white. So you have to figure out how to make sure that all your compositions incorporate those and they're not muddled or too dark to tell what's going on. Um, and you really have to pay attention for your silhouettes and your readability. You want to make sure that everything is understandable. Um, that's a problem that I've run into working with just pure black and white comics. It's where, you know, I've used too much black on a page or too much white and it's hard to tell what's going on. Um, so you really have to make sure that your silhouettes stand out and they're very readable. People can understand them when they look at them. Overall, it's, <laughs> in my very biased opinion, I really love pure black and white um, just because I really appreciate uh, line work and I think it really lets you focus on your lines um, and, you know, getting all those handmade textures down and stuff. You can get some really atmospheric stuff with it. When I think about it, I tend to think about like noir mystery comics or horror comics but you can use it for anything you want. Now, screen tones. Screen, using screen tones for your grayscale, they can be used to great effect for texture and lighting effects because they, the, like, they inherently have texture. <laughs> um, and they come in a variety of textures, like, for a whole bunch of different atmospheres or, like, you know, like, even to wood grain or um, clothing texture. You can just pull it out and put it on your comic and it works really well. Um, you can do a lot of stuff like shaving off pieces of the screen tone to get really cool lighting effects. Like you can make like, um, I don't know, <laughs> you can do a lot with them. Um, they're very versatile that way. And I think they're very cool because they, they work very similar to black and white, like pure black and white comics, but they give the effect of like a grayscale. So like if the dots are tighter together, then they appear to be darker. If they're farther apart, they appear lighter. Um, but you're really just using like pure black ink for each dot. Um, so yeah, they're very cool that way. Um, one con, I think, for screen tones is that if they're misused, they can, they can be very noisy visually. You know, if someone has, like, a screen tone on every single thing, it can be really distracting or hard to read. Or, you know, if people are using them more sparingly or using them for shadows, then it can look very cool. Uh, so I guess if you're using screen tones, just be careful of that. Um, you don't want your stuff to be too noisy and hard to read. <laughs> um, but I guess that goes for any texture, really. Um, and yeah, screen tones are great. You can find them on any art program that you're using. Um, 
you know, in Photoshop, people have made a bunch of them. Uh, I don't know if they come in Photoshop, like, out of the box, but you can definitely find them all over the place and they're pretty easy to use. And then if you have, say, like, uh, Clip Studio Paint, they have a bunch of screen tones already built in. Um, and if you're working traditionally, you can also buy screen tones and apply them to your pages that way. So, they're cool. I haven't worked with them too much since I was like a kid and just playing around with them. And by that I mean like I've only ever used them digitally, I've never tried them traditionally, so I can't really speak to that very much. Um, but yeah, screen tones are fun. I know when I was younger I overused them a lot. Um, when I was learning, <laughs> um, and recently I haven't used them, but they are awesome. I love when they're used to great effect, so go for it if that's what you want. Um, it'll definitely give your comic a cool manga feel. They're also great to print because you don't have to guess if, like, the gray will print differently, because like I said, it's just black dots. They'll turn out how they appear. And finally, what are the pros and cons of using a full grayscale? I'm always very cautious about using a full grayscale because the danger of full grayscale is that you can go super mid-tone and kill your contrast. So contrast is super important, similar to black and white comics. It's super important because it helps with readability. If everything is the same tone, it's hard to tell what anything is. Um, even if you have a really strong silhouette, if it's against a color that is like the exact same tone, then it can look boring or it might not be readable at all. Another danger of full grayscale is sticking too close to the dark end of the spectrum or too close to the light end of the spectrum, which again can be very boring. Um, if you stick to the light spectrum, it can make your work seem very like light and airy and flat. If you stick to the dark, it can make it really hard to read. So when you are choosing like a full grayscale, try to limit how many tones you choose. Sorry, how many values you choose, not tones. I'd pick like a couple highlights, so it's stuff in the super light area of the grayscale, um, and then a couple shadows, so stuff in the dark, and then maybe one mid-tone. <laughs> mid-tone is everything in the middle. Avoid those. They will kill the contrast. You don't want to overuse them. Um, and they can make things hard to read if you use too many of them. So stick to maybe one mid-tone. That would be my advice. <laughs> so as long as you're careful with that, I think using a full grayscale comic is great. Um, there's a tons of versatility for contrast. Um, you can play around with shadows and light effects a lot more than you can with, say, just pure black and white. It gives you a lot more room to set atmosphere and mood. It's almost like using color, but it gets rid of all the, you know, all the extra layers of complicated when you're using a, a color, when you're making a color comic. <laughs> and yeah, and again, it just depends on what you're going for with your comic, whether you want to choose, you know, a full grayscale using screen tones or pure black and white. Yeah, it just depends on what you want to do. Um, <laughs> if you are designing your comic and you're not sure what you want to go with, like you think you want to do, say, like a black and white comic, one, I'd recommend it because it's a little easier than starting with a color comic. Working with color can get very complicated, whereas doing something that's black and white or grayscale will take that extra layer of work away from it, I guess. Um, I mean, they're all challenging in their own right, but it's one less thing to do. <laughs> and it can teach you a lot about contrast. It's a great way to start with comics because um, you can just get to your inking phase and then you're done. You don't have to color it. You can start putting out pages. Um, that is one of the reasons why Bones and I moved to black and white comics. Our first comic ever was in color, and then we decided to go with the black and white approach because we were like, let's make a comic that we can put out more quickly. Ooh. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would highly recommend black and white comics. Again, I think the biggest thing to worry about is contrast and readability. Um, that does go for color comics as well, um, but I think it's a lot easier to really focus on that when you are working in grayscale or black and white. It simplifies it and lets you focus on that a little bit more. And that'll transfer to all your work. It'll make it all better. So really focus on making sure that your stuff is understandable. So yeah, I think that's all I have about the wonders of grayscale comics. Um, if you have any questions about that, please leave a comment down below. And if you would like to see more cool videos about comics and webcomics and writing webcomics, please make sure to subscribe. Oh, and also, Bones and I will be doing a live stream this Saturday, probably the evening or the afternoon. We don't know yet, 
But we'll be doing a live stream answering all your questions. It'll be a wonderful Q&A, and I'll be working on the magpie covers. So yeah, there you go. Please come visit us and say hello. We will be streaming here on YouTube. Yeah, see you there. You already. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.